Hi everybody. Uh, today I'm going to read a book called Stinkalope Tex Visits Klutzville. It's just called Klutzville here because that's what it was originally titled. But let's go. Far away on the plains at the base of a hill was a town that the folks around those parts called Klutzville. It probably had a nice name once before, but nobody knew what it was anymore. Now the people of Klutzville were friendly and smart. They all had a knack for both science and art. But even though all of them had lots of talents, the thing that they lacked was a good sense of balance. When townspeople gathered together in groups, the word that was heard most often was oops. The mayor was constantly dropping his hat, and Mrs. O'Dare always tripped on her cat. For most of the school children, things were okay, since kids always fall all the time anyway. Their parents would put them all safe in their beds, where they'd stay for a while and then fall on their heads. When the town's baseball team would compete in a game, it was sad, for the outcome was always the same. The other team played with both skill and with style, while the Klutzville ball players just fell in a pile. The one thing you could bet on for sure in this town was that when someone walked, they would likely fall down. And a stranger to Klutzville would sure find it odd to see all the people sprawled out in the sod. Now Lily and Bess were a most klutzy pair. They'd trip over things that were not even there. They'd bump things and bang things and toppled and tripped, and broke things and dropped things and stumbled and slipped. And then they'd both have to see good Dr. Wing for bumps, cuts, and bruises and that sort of thing. She'd fix them both up and then send them away, and that's how it was there in Klutzville each day. One day, Bess and Lily were walking along when things just went horribly, terribly wrong. At first, Bess bumped Lily, then Lily bumped Bess, then they both tumbled down in a klutzified mess. Their arms and their legs and their heads and their feet were tangled and twisted right there in the street. I might as well stay here, said Bess with a frown, for if I stand up, I shall fall right back down. This is silly, said Lily. She lay in the dirt with a frown on her face and some mud on her shirt. If we're always like this, we should at least try to find a more sensible way to get by. It takes us 10 minutes to just cross the street. No wonder our baseball team always gets beat. She looked at her town made of brick, stone, and wood and dreamed up a plan which she thought was quite good. So Lily sat down and wrote out a letter. She knew just the person to make this town better. Dear sir, it began, I believe you're the man. If you cannot help us, I don't know who can. All of us here in our fair little town can't seem to stand up and we always fall down. We're klutzy and clumsy, and if you come here, perhaps you can help us to stand up and cheer. And then, two weeks later, a stranger rode in, with a horse and some boots and a nose past his chin. Far, far, far past his chin, and the folks craned their necks to catch just a glimpse of old Stinkalope Tex. Golly gosh, dearie me, I do rightly declare, there's a scent of fresh daisies I smell in the air. Yes, indeed, said the mayor. It's our town's favorite flower. There's a whole bed of them by the town hall clock tower. Old Stinkalope Tex ran his hand through his hair and gazed at the daisies across the town square. He narrowed his eyes and he wrinkled his brow, then stood very still like a cud-chewing cow. He lifted his nose and he opened his eyes and he sniffed a great sniff of gargantuan size. There is something not right, announced Tex. I can tell, for the daisies right here have the wrong kind of smell. But they all smell like daisies, said Lily, perplexed. Every daisy smells just like the next and the next. But not these, declared Tex. Let me see that one there. And Lily gave Tex the one tucked in her hair. He gave it a twirl just below his great nose. There's more to this flower than you might suppose. Young lady, said Tex. Please don't think that I'm crazy, but what you have here is a rare whoopsie daisy. You just made that up, said the mayor to Tex. I've seen no such thing in my flower index. Oh, they're real, replied Tex, and you've got quite a few, and they look just the same as the plain daisies do. 
But these whoopsie daisies, they pack quite a punch, especially now that you have a whole bunch. They give out the faintest, most delicate smell that plays with your heads like you're under a spell. So that's why I'm clumsy, said Lily at once. That's why I drop things and act like a dunce. That is why, replied Tex, and if you have the power, you'll have to work hard to uproot every flower. But daisies are lovely, said Lily. They're pretty. To pull them all up would be such a great pity. I can't make your mind up, said Tex, but I'll say you'll always be klutzy as long as they stay. The mayor thanked Stinkelope Tex, then he turned, and he said to the people, Now see what we've learned? All these whoopsie daisies are causing us woe. The mayor said plainly, they simply must go. So we'll pull them all up, he continued, right now, with shovel and pickaxe and trowel and plow. The townspeople ran to their houses and sheds and came back with tools to destroy flower beds. But wait, shouted Lily, please don't do this, please. If we don't have flowers, then we don't have bees. The bees help our fruit trees to bloom in the spring. If they're not around, it would be a bad thing. We wouldn't have apples or peaches or cherries. No pears, grapes, or apricots, also no berries. We need to get strength from these fruit trees of ours, and the trees need the bees, and the bees need the flowers. She makes a good point, said the mayor, although can't the bees find some other nice place they could go? Perhaps, Lily said, but I think there's a way that the bees and the trees and the flowers can stay. We'll just have to live with our klutziness now. I think we can do that, and I'll show you how. Although we're all klutzy, I think we're quite skilled. By working together, I think we can build a greenhouse, a greenhouse all toasty and warm to keep plants alive in the worst winter storm. But why build a greenhouse, asked Mrs. O'Dare. Our plants do just fine in the warm outside air. Because, answered Lily, we need special trees, which only grow well when it's 90 degrees. These trees produce rubber, and that will be swell for when we all have a bad klutziness spell. So the townspeople got out their hammers and nails and jigsaws and rulers and buckets and pails. And even though most of them took a few falls and tripped over lumber and ran into walls and smashed a few fingers and stubbed a few toes, if you lived in Klutzville, that's just how it goes, they finally did it by working together. They put up a greenhouse to keep out the weather. And then the whole town began planting those trees they put on their gloves and got down on their knees. They planted them neatly in row after row and sat back to watch all those rubber trees grow. They did grow those rubber trees day after day. They grew through the winter, October to May. The greenhouse was perfect for those rubber trees. The townspeople liked it and so did the bees. And now, shouted Lily, let's harvest this stuff. Let's turn things all bouncy, which used to be rough. So all of the townsfolk grabbed handfuls of goo and set to work doing what they had to do. They covered the sidewalks and covered the hedges and tacked up that rubber to corners and edges. In no time at all, they had fixed the whole town, and now no one hurt themselves when they fell down. So now when the Klutzvillers stumble and fall, they hop right back up with no worries at all. If they fall on the rubber, they bounce to their feet and remark as they land, why this town can't be beat. They lived with the daisies, they lived with the bees, they lived with their klutziness, thanks to those trees. And Stinkalope Tex, well, he moseyed along, out onto the prairie, singing a song. And that's Klutzville, or Stinkalope Tex visits Klutzville, whichever one you would like to call it. Uh, it is not published. Maybe someday it will be published. Thanks for listening. See you next time. <laughs>